Welcome to the Prime Venture Partners podcast. I am absolutely delighted to have with us Ashish Munjal, co-founder and CEO of Sunstone at University with us. Ashish has been in many startup adventures and I'm particularly proud and privileged because we are investors in Sunstone and I get to work with Ashish and his co-founder Piyush a lot. So welcome to the show, Ashish. Thank you so much, Amit. And it's really a pleasure to be here. We have heard a lot of great things about Prime Podcast and heard a lot of the podcast, but it's really a great feeling to be here uh, recording with you. Great, Ashish. And I think as we always say, this is a paid forward. So I'm sure there are many other Ashishes who are going to be listening to this and getting inspired and doing the next big thing. So maybe you can just give us a quick background on yourself, Ashish, in terms of your entrepreneurial journey, both pre-Sunstone and then a bit with the Sunstone founding story. Absolutely. So I'll maybe start quickly how it all started and obviously very typical stuff, engineering, MBA, and then right after college, I decided that I want to do consulting. So joined Deloitte It was a short stint, then moved out, joined Bank of America investment banking team. After three years, kind of realized that it's a great paying job, but it's not a career that I want to pursue for next 25, 30 years. At that point in time, I moved out and joined a startup here in Gurgaon named Nolarity Communication. It was early days, sort of the Indian startup ecosystem, 2012. But really, really got hang of things, how startup works, how do you create product, how do you get the initial set of users. It was a, a SaaS play, so got hang of things on the SaaS uh, side of things as well. Did a lot of experimentation on the growth distribution side. And after spending one and a half years uh, with Nolarity, after that, I and a colleague of mine, Samir Grover, both of us moved out and we started a company named Crownit. Uh, Crownit basically started as a deals platform where we were pushing more and more business to our partner merchant. We raised our series A. Piyush also joined very, very early in the founding team of uh, Crownit. And in between, obviously, not all the stories go as you plan. So in between, we also pivoted to become more of a mobile-led market research platform. So pivot was more evident in terms because we started as a B2C consumer internet platform, and then we pivoted to become more of a B2B sort of a story. At that point in time, both Piyush and I uh, decided that eventually we want to move out. So I uh, planned my exit and I moved out in June, July, 2018, and then Piyush followed and he moved out in November. So it was sort of understanding between me and Piyush that once both of us move out, we'll start something on our own. And education has, personally for me, education has really, really been close to my heart because I come from a very, very small town near a city, Meerut, and I have seen the like the education system, what is there in the tier two, tier three cities of the country up close. And I actually feel myself very, very lucky that I have been able to break out and I have been able to get exposure of such good education system with my MBA and then with my work experiences. But there are a lot of people who I know very closely couldn't get that kind of exposure. And it's sort of itch that I always had that I can contribute back for those people who I grew up with, that they can also uh, like break out, they can also have a good uh like they, they can also make up like a good career out of their education so that was the itch and uh, that's when Piyush and i uh, started discussing in fact very very few people know that i started something in 2012 as well during my bank of america days in education space couldn't scale that up shut that down within first six months itself so maybe realize that uh, to become more wiser. <laughs> so that's when Piyush and I got together and we spent around six months just figuring out what's happening in the Indian education space, met everybody whosoever was doing anything. And then we kind of realized that we want to build something in the higher education space because there you can create the impact and it's much more visible in the like a lesser duration of time. Because if you start building out something in the K-12 space, it takes very long gestation period to understand what kind of impact you have created. So decided that we want to do something in the education space. We were very clear that we don't want to target the top segment. So wanted to build something for the tier two, tier three uh, class uh, of uh, consumers. So that's how sort of Sunstone came into picture and uh, that's the journey about Sunstone. And we started with MBA as our first program because obviously it's a relatively shorter duration program. So that's the story in a nutshell about uh, who I am and where we are. Wonderful. We'll, we'll talk a lot more about Sunstone and, and a lot of the education trends you're seeing. But what were some of the learnings from the Nolarity and the Crownit experience that you have carried on yeah. Uh, I mean, a couple of things that you think that uh, were valuable to you. So personally for me, and this can be slightly controversial as well, 
but i personally believe that choosing the right market is something which is very very critical and this is more and more true in case of nolarity because both the founders were great hustlers they they could have built any company they could have been the founders of that company but i think the market that they choose was may not be the right and obviously at that point in time it was 2008 you don't know what's the right market size and everything so choosing the right market is something which is very very critical and you can spend maybe 6 months more before you finally take the plunge that okay i want to do this but you have to be very very clear that what's the size of the market and let's say if this 5 years 7 years down the line what's the what's the tam how large this can eventually become so that's if and that's also depends what kind of aspiration you have with yourself wonderful and and maybe just a bit about the kind of crowned experience as well right because they were one was b2b one was more b2c right sunstone is probably like a little bit in between as b2b to c as well anything on that dimension or is just more the particular problem that you end up choosing we yeah, absolute so in crown it uh, we didn't make that same mistake wherein we choose the right category because it was a lifestyle spend that we were trying to target so obviously the market segment was very very large but unluckily for us if you look at globally nobody has been really able to crack online to offline space whether it's us metro did something in china but again they were a multi category kind of a play they were doing everything from food delivery to movies to everything so online to offline was a difficult sort of a play and we were trying to do too many things at crown it so we did launch our own meal vouchers we did launch our own credit card we did launch our own uh, crown it vouchers we were trying to do pay through crown it so when some things are not working for you then you try to do too many things at a time so one learning from crown it what i would say is that we would have focused maybe much more on one or two things rather than spreading ourselves too thin Yeah that makes a lot of sense. So maybe for those of our listeners who are not familiar with Sunstone maybe just a quick sort of uh, tweet level summary on what Sunstone is and what it does. Absolutely. If you look at Sunstone what we are trying to do is that we are trying to create a education experience for the tier 2 tier 3 college student which is similar to tier 1 in nature. So that's in nutshell this is exactly what we are trying to do at Sunstone. and we know that let's say when we talk about education outcomes whether we talk about education experience for the students in tier 2 tier 3 category that's something which is broken so whether we talk about number of students who are able to get into any kind of jobs number of students who have the right employability metrics in tier 2 tier 3 we read lot of reports whether it's nascom asochem that very few students have the right sort of skill set to become employable whether they get into a job or not that's a secondary thing but what kind of outcome they are getting from their education so this is exactly what we are trying to fix we work in partnership with the colleges we go to these colleges and we work in partnership with these colleges where we co manage or co run the program with these colleges so essentially idea is to create a education experience for this category of student which is something if not at par but at least the best in this segment in which we are operating in absolutely and i think you're probably underselling yourself there are many interesting things and i'll ask about some of those since we worked together for a couple of years but i loved it when we decided to invest in in sunstone and and the thing that both piyush and you said is you wanted to basically build a company that had accountability in education and that was quite an alien concept and uh, i think you started with your first program which was the pay after placement mba saying you only get paid you know i mean the student only pays the fees if they get placed and i know the company has evolved since but this whole notion of accountability in education education that works i think that is phenomenal so how has the journey been you know what what have some of the early learnings what have you seen from the market from the student side from the college side you also graduated quite a few people any things you can share with our listeners absolutely so when we started whenever we used to reach out to colleges whenever we used to reach out to student it was like and we had this notion we still had this notion in our country that if you are running a education uh, company you have to be more than 50 years old or you should uh, like you should come from 20 years of academic experience so whenever we are reaching out to college we used to get very and pushed was the one who actually uh, used to do this thing but he used to get very funny kind of comment from the owners that you are the new india you are the young india it was their way of saying that you are too young to be doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah on a serious note we did face initial challenges when we are going and signing up colleges when we are actually trying to convince student that they should be 
taking a plunge with us rather than going to a college which is 20 years old so those were the initial set of challenges but what we have been able to achieve uh, so far is that we have been able to place our first batch and we stand around 97 98% placements and as compared to the other colleges let's say in the same segment we see that we have done a phenomenally better job and obviously i am being the interested party here obviously i would like to say that but that's what we have seen in student nps uh, that we have seen in student let's say outcomes overall uh, interviews that we do or whatever we are speaking with the corporate so we see that okay this is something which can truly transform the lives of students who are coming and enrolling with us and one thing amit which has been our learning as well and it is something very very real and impactful is that there are majority if not majority there are large number of students who are coming and studying at sunstone and that's true for the same segment they are the first ones in their family to ever go to a corporate so you don't only giving or uh, helping a student achieve their outcome you are actually elevating a family and i don't want to say poverty or anything or middle income or a lower income but you are actually elevating a family who has never worked in a corporate to being working in a corporate and these are smaller things that we have to uh, like because let's say if i am coming from a family where in my dad was working in a firm so i have those kind of notion that okay getting ready and going to office is something which is very normal but for these student that's also something which is they are doing first time in their lives so it's something which is a very novelty very new things sort of new things are happening in our students journey yeah and and the other thing ashish which you should probably talk about is the fact that in addition to the lifestyle right like the discipline and getting up and going to work and all that i think a lot of the skills that are needed by the so called new age india whether it is you know newer companies or existing companies they are not taught today and i think you guys are doing a lot of innovation in figuring out what is it that you need in a new age employee not just the employee needing a job or or learning discipline yeah that so don't get me started on that one so because that's another big big beast that we have to tackle and even if i'll give you some examples it will be like sort of mind boggling example so there are universities uh, and i won't name them but there are a lot of universities in our country and there are large universities which have not updated their curriculum since last 10 12 years and it means that they don't even have let's say digital marketing in their curriculum there are a lot of universities which are still teaching vat to the students and when gst has been introduced 5 years ago so abhi bachcha kya karta hai ki wo pehle college mein vat padhta hai fir baad mein gst ki coaching leta hai because ultimately he has to work on a gst if he joins in an accounting firm so there are a lot of such things and these are only the tip of the iceberg let's say even if as an uh, university you have introduced gst in your curriculum that does not complete the task education always has been a black box like if i am studying in my mba college and if i am studying let's say marketing 101 i will only get to know how did i do in marketing 101 at the end of trimester or at the end of my semester now i cannot go back in time and reteach marketing 101 to the student i have to move forward and teach marketing 102 to him and that means whatever he has not learned in marketing 101 he will never learn those things so idea is to completely make this black box into a more transparent and make it into a real feedback loop kind of a system so can you generate lot of data on the student so that you continuously know where your student is going so what we call this internally is sunstone learning index so we are able to track every student real time on a day to day basis that whether the student is actually learning or is not learning and is let's say going down the learning index path so that we can put a remedial action plan for student and obviously at a scale of let's say 2000 or 5000 student it is impossible to do this manually and that is where tech plays a very very critical role that you don't have to do this manual intervention for every student you have your systems in place you have your software tech in place which can actually measure every student's learning index and then give remedial action through lmss and through lot of assignments and videos to the student so that by the time they come back for the next class they are prepared and they have understood the previous concept well wonderful let's go back to a couple of the sort of more challenging parts of the journey right everybody talks about all the rosy stuff um you know i think fundraising was sort of not trivial right and of course now you have many investors you know prime is privileged to be an investor we have sama capital we have westbridge now but along the journey right so how has that experience been number one number two covid was like a huge impact to the firm 
So if you can talk a little bit about some of the not so fun times and and how you and and Piyush and the firm not only survived but sort of thrived through it, that will be very interesting to our listeners. Yes, definitely. So yes, as you said, that fundraising was not, like for us, it's not like literally the cakewalk to go and raise funds initially, and obviously we had uh, seen our share of difficult times uh, as well. So we started this in 2019 and obviously we started with a very, very small angel fund that we raised and initial five, six months were slightly difficult. And I would say once we raised money from Prime, at least there was some stability uh, to the things. But then suddenly, and obviously we were going on our plans and everything that after one year we'll grow 5x and this and that. And then suddenly COVID struck. And more than anything, it was the time of uncertainty, which is more problematic for us than like the real business. And one thing which we also realized at that point in time is that we made certain changes to the business model so that also to make it slightly more uh, a business which generates slightly more upfront cash for the lack of better words. And the reason for that obviously is to ensure that because those were the uncertain times, we also didn't want to be in a situation where we don't know uh, how next six months are going to pan out for us. And that was also an interesting experiment that we did because before that time we were completely pay after placement sort of a model. And when I look back, I would say that was a sort of a lucky thing or eventually a good thing for us that it panned out in a manner because because of that COVID 15, 20 days of uncertainty, that was the time we launched the upfront fee model for our students as well. And initially we were also not very sure that how many percentage of people will opt for it, what will happen. And because in our mind, we were thinking we were anchoring ourselves more like a pay after placement sort of a brand. But to our surprise in our year one, 30% student actually opted for the upfront fee model. And since then, it's actually going up, up and up. So today we stand at around 42, 43% students who opt for full upfront fee model. And that's also gives us a lot of confidence that whatever we are doing for the student, that's something really, really meaningful for them. And they actually see a value in us. Okay, whatever education you are delivering, whatever, let's say activities, whatever training and placement services that you're doing for us, this is something really meaningful for us. And I'm ready to put my trust in you and the fee that we are here talking about it's in lakhs. So it's a, like, it's a lot of skin in the game from student side as well. So I would say maybe March, 2020 time for us, but luckily for us, it's the students love. It's the student trust in us, which has ensured that we easily and very comfortably sail through it. Yes. I remember vividly the resilience and the grit that you guys had, but well, there was one more thing, which actually we spoke about, but I learned the term from you, which was the zero-based budgeting. And I think we ended up doing that with the entire portfolio during COVID wave one, which is we said, look, let's do this bottoms up from scratch. And what do we do? It's, it reminded me a bit of the Apollo 13 mission where they said we have to bring Apollo 13 back home. So we have to figure out everything that's unnecessary and, and yet, you know, kept the team intact and all that. So so I maybe you want to talk just a little bit about zero-based budgeting, what that is and any yeah. comments there. So this is something that I personally run from (laughs) Shaker. So when we were going through difficult times at Crownit and we were like thinking about how we can turn this company into a sort of profitable company without burning a lot of money. And we were coming from that consumer internet hangover where we were in the habit of building, burning large sum of money every month. So it was sort of a very uh, like a immediate shift for us. And when one fine day, Shaker and we were doing some, let's say, uh, modeling with Shaker that, okay, how much more money would you need if you do this, this and that. And I was just presenting a couple of models to him and just one fine day he called me. What if you do zero based budgeting? So like, okay, sir, what's it for you? (laughs) At least enlighten me what that is. So assume that you're starting it from fresh and then do whatever you want to do. Don't uh, like decrease or don't cut down from your, where you're sitting currently, just start from scratch. So essentially it is all about what is the bare bone things or the bare bone expenditure that you need to do? If you have to assume that you're starting from scratch, doesn't matter where you are currently, assume that you're starting from scratch. If you have to run the business critical function, what is the bare bone minimum expenditure that you have to do? That's essentially what is uh, zero based budgeting. Wonderful. Um, fast forwarding a little bit, you know, now that you have the program working and like you said, you graduated many students. Can you talk about what 
corporate India, whether it's startups or existing companies, etc., what are they looking for in, in some of these graduates? Um, and in, to that degree, if there are entrepreneurs out there who, by the way, we get now at Prime a lot of pitches saying, I'm the sunstone of this and I'm the sunstone. It heartens my heart given that we kind of did the seed round with you guys. But what are some of the things that the employers are looking for in terms of these students in general, not just Sunstone, but even beyond? Absolutely. So that's one thing which actually we have spent a lot of time and resources on to understand what corporates are looking for. Because even and this is irrespective whether we do pay after placement or not, because we eventually the only thing that we stand for is making you career ready, is providing you great education experience, whether you plan to take up a job right now, or you plan to start your career three years down the line, four years down the line, that's secondary. But whatever education we are providing you, that should ensure that you get success or we are able to deliver success to you. And that's the reason ultimately corporate is where the real rubber hits the ground. So we've spent a lot of time and energy with corporates to understand what are their needs, what are they looking for. And in fact, one thing which has come categorically clear, and now that we are launching different, different other program outside of MBA, we are launching BCA, we are launching BPA. Uh, one thing which has come categorically clear is that they are looking for students who have good aptitude and problem solving skills. And secondly, they are decently good on the communication side of things. And thirdly, which is a lot of corporates say is one of the most important thing is the student needs to have the right attitude to work in a corporate. At the entry level, these are the three skills. And surprisingly for us, these are the three skills, even the companies which are recruiting them for the tech positions also have laid out only three things. None of the companies so far have told me that if I'm hiring anybody at the fresher level, even for a tech role, I'm looking that he should have a knowledge how to write a good code or something. It's only the three things, problem solving, communication, and the right attitude. Yeah, that's fascinating, actually, right? I mean, it's literally saying, look, uh, if you have the raw skills, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. And maybe that's a good segue into NEP. I mean, how is public policy, government policy and mindset sort of, where is that at? And how is that helping uh, with respect to both education in general and in mass, and then particularly with the ed techs? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So one thing which is actually has been very encouraging is the way this government is coming out with a lot of policies which are actually supporting sort of skill-based learning. And then now with between Piyush and me, we represent Sunstone in a lot of these forums. Recently, we partnered with TAG to come out with India Skills Report as well. And it, as a part of that process, we have interacted with not only with corporate, we have interacted with a lot of government bodies as well, whether it's the skills ministry, whether it's, let's say, SOHM, CII. So one thing which has been categorically clear within the government as well, they also want to, obviously government can't just like do a breakneck kind of thing. They can't just immediately move away, but they have been gradually trying to move away from a lot of academic things and move into more skill-based kind of a things. So whether we look at NEP or the other initiatives that government is taking. So even in NEP, we have seen that government is trying to break the degree. If you do four years, you get a, let's say a degree. If you do two years, you will get a diploma. If you do one year, you can get a certificate and you can come back anytime and continue after that. So let's say if I enroll myself in a three-year program, I only did two years, I'll get a diploma and I can maybe start working. And maybe after two years, I can come back. I can do one more year and I can get my degree. So these are the one of the very interesting sort of way the government has started to look on education space. One more thing, which is very, very interesting is that, and that's something that we have been proponenting from very long time that the full-time education, the formal education, the full-time education should evolve more into a hybrid form of learning because in current context, in current times, you cannot completely ignore online learning. And there are a lot of benefits that online learning also brings in. So it's the uh, hybrid nature of education, which is a mix of both offline and online should evolve. Uh, the full-time program should evolve into a more hybrid kind of a program. And that's what government in last two years has come up with a lot of notification wherein now as a part of the full-time program, the 40% of the learning or the teaching can happen online as well. So that the time the student gets on this 40% of the, like the tenure, he can do a lot of projects. He can do a lot of internships. He can start working with the corporate simultaneously. He can complete this 40% of the credits. 
so this is a welcome change from like from the whole industry uh, per se that government has brought in uh, ashish you said several things i want to double click on right one is the move from academics to skill orientation earlier you said even the corporates right they are more interested in fundamental problem solving skills communication skills you know attitude aptitude and so forth um have the students also internalized this and the parents who of course in the indian context play a big role or are they still like no no just go to a classic thing and get a degree even if they're teaching you about vat versus gst uh, so where is the mindset at have people made that transition that hey look all i need are skills and the right attitude doesn't matter whether i have a formal degree or not so that's actually something which will take some degree of telling students onboarding the parents because in our country the degree hangover is very very like it's always been there and that's where i applaud government's effort that what they're trying to do is that in a manner which is similar to our existence sunstone existence as well they are trying to plug lot of skill based metric skill based courses in the mainstream degree itself so that's the good part and recently we were interacting with somebody in the skills ministry and they are saying the government is now coming up with a like a stack which is not like a aadhar kind of a stack but more of a stack wherein every student's skills will be tagged so let's say if i am good in problem solving that will be tagged there rather than my marks in the marketing subject so that's the good part let's say uh, if i have good in problem solving i am good in communication those skills will be tagged so you can actually work on these skills and from the corporate we know that what are the skills a corporate would need so gradually we should move away from more academic side of things that okay what is my accounting marks or economic marks were there in the fourth trimester i topped in accounting to let's say i am at the level 4 in the problem solving in the overall metrics yeah that that is so heartening to hear and also the breaking down like you said of the diplomas versus certificate versus degrees and having this notion of continuing education so even if you got a degree which you know maybe accounted for something but you don't have the skills you can still go and get it somewhere right so i think that is fantastic any other thoughts ashish if you were to start a company today or if there are other entrepreneurs tuning in and listening to this where are some of the interesting larger problems to solve where are some of the other big challenges or opportunities that you see are underserved as you look at it so uh, and obviously uh, this is something uh, which is sort of a fun conversation between piyush and i we were having that once you are in something then suddenly lot of opportunities open up now i can see okay there are lot of opportunities let's say on the nursing side of things there are lot of adjoining opportunities on the pharma side of things and there are lot of opportunities which you can create uh, in in a more consumer first uh, phenomena as well we all of us know that there are big big dearth of uh, good tech talent in the country and the good part is that there are multiple interesting ways of solving these problems and i i am a big fan of gtm personally so there are a lot of interesting ways of doing your go to market in this market because uh, and this is something that because i have been there in the startup ecosystem from now 8 9 years so suddenly in last 2 3 years and this is maybe a geo phenomena or something but we are seeing a huge depth in the indian markets now so that's the good thing that you can earlier what used to be used to be thinking whether there is if i do this or uh, well, whether i hit the headroom too soon or not so those kind of problems don't exist uh, at least now you can go very very deep in one of the two segments that you pick up and obviously once you are very deep then you can start expanding into multiple other segments as well Great Ashish as we wrap up one final question uh, how have you changed personally not just the companies and the business and the tam and all that uh, what have you learned about yourself and what do you do to sort of stay abreast and and keep up leveling yourself absolutely so one thing which i would say i have been lucky enough from very very early days of my college is that i always picked up this habit of reading and i personally believe that if you are a avid reader then obviously you can continuously keep i would say upskilling may not be the right word but you can continuously keep upskilling yourself because you learn a lot from other people's what their experiences and everything and that's where if you can let's say start a book of 300 pages finish it in a one day that's something that i would say it's a asset it's a, a good thing that you're born with or you've picked up so that way i would say with sunstone i have learned lot of things i have uh, at least i'd like to believe that i have become much more 
calmer and patient as a person because in and 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 i see i whenever i meet people from let's say crown it they also t- tell me that okay now you look much more calm you look much more settled and maybe it's the age that at that point in time i was like brimming with energy always and and i we have people in the company now who uh, can do that and who do that one is that and secondly obviously between let's say how to how to give a lot of space to your other partners how to work with them that's something personally that i have actually been working on uh, a lot from last 2 3 years and definitely in the education space if you are building a company which you believe that it's a generational company it will go a very very long way then you have to uh, establish yourself you know your voice your thoughts should be established in the industry as well so personally as a entrepreneur i always believe that it's always a journey and you always keep learning you always keep making mistakes but yeah it's a long long road for all of us awesome ashish thank you so much for being on the prime venture partners podcast uh, i think we could uh, go on and on but uh, really appreciate you spending the time thank you so much amit really a pleasure Listeners, thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Subscribe now on your favorite podcast app for free and you'll be the first one to know when new episodes are available. Just search for Prime Venture Partners podcast in Apple Podcast, Spotify, Castbox or however you get your podcasts. Then hit subscribe. And if you have enjoyed the show, we would be really grateful if you leave us a review on Apple Podcast. To read the full transcript, find the link in the show notes.